Let me talk about four content frameworks you should be using in your recruitment or search business if you want to attract more of your ideal clients and candidates. So if you're listening live, just give us a like and write live in the comments. If you're watching a quick replay, uh, just give us a like and watch replay in the comments just to let us know. Also help boost the algorithm. Terry, you want to speak just to make sure the sound Yeah. I am certainly okay to speak. Really looking forward to this. It's our weekly live podcast. We're here every Wednesday at the same time. Our sole aim is to help you uh, make more placements, earn more money with fewer headaches. Um, so we offer these trainings completely free of charge. There's no cost, there's no obligation. Uh, but just, we want to add as much value to help you in any, any way that we can. So thank you very much for joining us. If you're watching the recording, thanks for watching the recording as well. Perfect. So yeah, look, let's dive right into it. Four content frameworks you should be using if you want to attract uh, more of your ideal clients in your recruitment search business. Um, Again, just, just for those of you tuning in, if you're watching this anywhere other than the Make More Places community, if you're watching YouTube, listen to our podcast, make sure you uh, you know join the, join the Facebook group. That's where you get access to these trends live and first. Um, but yeah, let's just let's dive right in. So um, again, I wanted to sort of talk about this because during one of our calls, we'll have one of our, you know, some of the recruitment search personas we help. You know, we, we got talking about content and you know what should we put out put, what, what should we put out what frames we use what content works um you know what is the purpose of content and I just want to do a quick sort of 20 minute run through of four of the main frameworks that we teach in you know what we call the apex method right so we have a you know a private uh, coaching group where we teach recruitment services in all over the world um what we call the apex method is a system for growing a recruitment search business and um, that we've been you know plugging into you know, many, our clients for many years, and it, it, you know, it works really well. One of the sort of pillars of that is is, is content. How we use content. Um, I think, you know, to grow a business in terms of the business, business development side of your recruitment search business is is it, is really simple. There's a few sort of simple mechanisms you need. Right, you need a, a way to grow your audience on every single platform. So, a way to grow your database, a way to grow your, your email list, a way to grow your you know, LinkedIn connections, whatever platform it is that your audience run. You need one or a few mechanisms to grow your audience. You need a mechanism of, you know, we call it a method of demonstration. So that is, if you've got an audience on LinkedIn, for example, how can we demonstrate to them that you know what you're talking about, you're an authority in the space and we need a method for getting those people off that platform and into your sales process, which for most people is going to be an appointment right? So it's very simple. And we have a unique, unique way of doing this. Um, but in terms of the method of demonstration, that really comes down to content, the content that you put out, um, whether it, you know, doesn't matter what format, whether it's video, text, content, images, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're using content to really position you as an expert in your field. So, and to say top of, top of mind as well, I think, you know, one of the one of the keys to winning the business you want is making sure that you're the first person that your prospects think of, uh, if and when they're ready to buy, right? And, then, and one of the ways we can stay top of mind is by putting out regular and consistent content that positions you as an authority in your space. So just want to talk about the four types of content on four frameworks really that you should be using when it comes to putting out content. Terry, anything you add to that before we dive into the four? Yeah, um, I, I think it's one, one of the uh, couple of other benefits as well. If you, if you think about it as a, as a recruiter, your potential clients get a lot of messages from a lot of recruiters, from a lot of your competitors. <coughs> and you just reached out to a hiring manager saying, oh, I'm a great recruiter, can we have your business? You're kind of pushing water up a hill. One of the beauties of, of um, posting on, on platforms such as LinkedIn and uh, Instagram and, and, and Facebook, as long as your audience is there, is that they get to know you. So what, what, what happens then is when you when you call them, there's less pushback from them because they, they know who you are. If you say, hi, uh, my name's Terry Edwards from Make More Placements, you know, most recruiters will, 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 will know who we are. If you can say, hi, my name is, from the name of your firm, and most of your audience know who you are, that's exactly what you want because there's less resistance. And I think the other thing that Drew had there that's worth bearing in mind Position yourself as an expert is so important. The more you're perceived or positioned as an expert, the less resistance you have to your fee. The more you're positioned as an expert, the higher the fee that you, you can ask for as well, because you're seen as the expert. Of course, they can get it cheaper elsewhere. Of course, somebody's going to do it for 5% or 10% or silly fixed fee or whatever. Really ridiculously low um, fixed fee. So you, you're always going to get that. But if you can position yourself as an, as an expert, you're going to get less pushback. So I think it's, it's a out that's, that's worth, worth doing. So 
yeah, back to you, Drew, because I know you, you want to talk about um, the, the four methods. So I'll, I'll hand back to you to talk about the four methods. Just let you know, Drew, your mic's not on. Sorry, I had a bit of a coughing fit earlier. I turned it off so you didn't have okay. to get that. Um, but yeah, I just want to dive into the four uh, different frameworks or four different intents behind content that you put out. So number one, this is probably the one that people do most often, um, and that is uh, content for the purpose of engagement. So this is where you do a post, could be a video, could be um, a poll on LinkedIn, could be a Facebook post, it doesn't really matter what platform it's on, you know, it's all the same, where the sole purpose is engagement. When, when I say engagement, I'm talking about we are putting out content for the uh, sole purpose, you know, the sole intent behind that content is to generate likes and comments, right? Likes and comments. And again, this is probably what we see most common from uh, recruitment and search centers before they come into our program is that they're only putting out content for engagement. It's, it's probably people's, uh, I guess, most favored type of content when it comes to these four, four methods because you get that you know, instant gratification. If you get a like or you get a comment, we assume that you know that means it's good content because people are engaging with it. It gives us that you know that instant feedback, right? So the thing with this, and, and again, we'll make it very clear, um, engagement is very important to an overall or a bigger content strategy because you know the more people engage with your content, you know, for most platforms anyway, it, it, boosts, it means that it boosts the algorithm, right? So the more people like and comment on your content, the more people see your content. Therefore, the more people like and comment on your content, right? You get almost this snowball effect which is very very important for an overall bigger strategy right it helps your content get seen more i think one of the i guess problems with it is in isolation anyways if you're only doing content for engagement um you know one of the problems that people come to us with is they get a lot of engagement on their linkedin posts and their facebook posts um from clients and candidates it doesn't really matter but they're unable to convert that engagement into business or into opportunities right so um I could give an example of this, like one of our clients, Dan, based in Australia, he just on LinkedIn, he, he, he puts out content all the time, doesn't get any engagement barely, right? barely gets any engagement, but um, he's able to generate uh, 40 to 50 appointments with hiring managers per month via his LinkedIn, right? So engagement's not the be all and end all, right? It's, it's about how many opportunities are we creating, but engagement is important to an overall strategy if you're doing it in the right way. Um, Terry, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think I think the point uh, you made then. I, I I go so far to say that I think majority of recruiters, uh, the, the the position of their content is about engagement. It's very it's it's the exception if they're doing anything other than engagement. Now that's good, as Drew says, because you are you are getting seen, but rarely does it actually gen generate generate business in of itself. And ultimately, as a as a recruiter. Part of the reason you're doing this is to generate business. Part of the reason you're doing this is to increase your sales and acquire more clients and, and win over more candidates to, to, to come and talk to you. So if you're just getting people to know who you are and nothing else, kind of, it's, it's not going to work. So uh, the next type of, uh, 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 of post you should put out there is where you're giving value. Now, one of the things about what we call value only is that you're giving your, be it a candidate, be it a client, you're giving them some value. And I talked earlier about position, position yourself as an expert. This is where you get the opportunity to position yourself as an expert. And, you know, sometimes, I, I, in my opinion, Drew, I think a lot of recruiters underestimate the value they can offer to a hiring manager. There is this almost perception that whether they're hiring manager, surely, surely they know how to recruit. Well, not really, not if they've never been shown, not if they, they held a, a, a previous position that they'll be promoted into a, a more senior position and they need, need to build a team. It could well be that they've never, ever recruited before. And I think sometimes recruiters forget that and don't appreciate the value and the quality, the, the, yeah, the value and the expertise they can offer to, to a hiring manager and the guidance they can give. But it's a really important part because, as I said, the moment you're given value, it positions you as an expert. You're not just another recruiter, cold calling, begging for business. You're now the expert recruiter in that particular market. Thoughts on that, Drew? Yeah, I to agree. I think, um, again, I think this is an area that gets neglected. Right? I, think, I think we're in a day and age where people know and understand the importance of um, in our content. And, and what people tend to do is, you know, I need about content. So they either they hire someone to write the content for them or... They just end up sharing news items, you know, industry news. Um, you know, that's better than not doing any content at all. But 
the, the problem with that type of content, it very rarely gives value, right? The value is going to be coming from your mind or your brain. So, um, again, things like, you know, common mistakes that hiring managers make or, you know, where to find the top candidates or, you know, things that can help them uh, improve their recruitment process is, 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 you know, a post that purely talks about that with a video of written form, you know, five tips to find the best candidate or um, five tips to retain your team, whatever it happens to be, right? These, these are value-only posts. What these do, um, you know, as Terry said, they position you as an expert in your, in your space, build authority with your type of audience. Um, but also, it also, you know, builds equity in your audience as well. So if you think about it like, you know, a bank, um, we, we want to, you know, ultimately, what, what do we want when we build an audience? Right? We want to generate business, we want to generate opportunities, right? If we think about that as a withdrawal, when you give a value post, that's almost like we're depositing money in, right? So every time you do a value post, you're, you're, you're building good will with your audience, which is going to mean that, Later on down the line, you know, we can withdraw more, right? So again, this is why it's very, very important. Again, as a bigger part of that economic system, we need the engagement post so, you know, your content being seen and we need the value post we, 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 we almost put an equity back in to that audience you're building. Um, that sort of brings on to number three, which is the offer-only post, the offer-only post, right? So the intent behind this type of content is that we want to extract, you know, talk about equity, extract the equity that we have built um, with the audience to, to generate an opportunity. This is a type of content where we're saying, you know, it's almost like a direct call to action. So um, a, a few examples of this might be that, um, you, know, you know, it might be a job post, right? So we're not giving any value there. We're just saying, look, I've got this job. Um, here's the details. Message me if you're interested. Or it might be that um, you've got, you know, a candidate. I've got this candidate. Um, here's the quality I've got. Message me if you're interested. Right? This is an offer only post. We're trying to extract the equity that we have built within that audience, right? And the only intention is, to generate a, a business opportunity, right? So we've got the engagement post, which is to get likes and comments. We've got the value post, which is to build equity and give back to the audience. Then we've got the, the offer post, which is to, to, you know, make a withdrawal, take that, take that, um, you know, I, I guess, withdraw on that opportunity, create business opportunities for itself, right? And again, all of these in isolation, um, they, they don't really work as well compared to when they're put into an overall bigger strategy. Because they all, we need all of them. If we're only doing offer posts, what happens is um, we re- use up the equity really quickly, right? If we're only doing value posts, we, we guess we get a lot of e- equity, but we're not getting opportunities. Same with engagement as well. We get a lot, likes and comments, but we're not really um, building our authority in the market and we're not getting any opportunities as well. So we need to have these working um, in conjunction with each other as part of a bigger overall strategy. And um, again, give me a, a like or comment if that makes sense. And Terry, anything you can add to that? Yeah, I think it was uh, Stephen Kirby in his book, um, coming which book it was now. He talks about uh, this and about... Um, you should view every relationship like your current bank account and any interaction within that relationship. You ask yourself the question, have I just made a deposit into this account or into this relationship and have I made a withdrawal? And of course, you've got to do that equally. You can't have a relationship where you're just constantly making withdrawals and constantly making withdrawals because you know what's going to happen there. And, you, and by the same token, you can't have a relationship where you're constantly making a uh, uh, deposit. It's got to be an equal amount you know if you keep making withdrawals then you're overdrawn you know then that there's there's something wrong with that relationship so going back to what drew said about you know if you constantly just make offers you know i've got this got this position here um book an appointment with me or, or whatever that's constant withdrawals and then the perception then from your potential clients is or whenever so and so posts they're always making the withdrawal they're always asking me for something and they, it's called run their story. They run the story of what, of what you're actually saying. So you have to be really aware that you're doing the engagement, you're giving value, and sometimes it's, it's the offer only. Um, and, the, and the final one is what we call the hybrid version, where, where it's a mixture of everything. So you might give, you might give some value and there might be an offer to it. So example, uh, here's the value. Get this free report, five questions. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, doing this very quickly. Five questions you should never ask an IT executive during an interview. Get this free report. So you give them some value. You're going to give them five questions. You uh, should never uh, ask them. Uh, sorry, you saying to put the five questions in the post? That would be the value rather than. You, you can either do it. You can put it in the post, or you can offer it. Um, so you can say, "I've got this report, uh, this case case study of five questions you should never ask an IT professional." If you'd like a copy of the report, uh, now the offer is. Uh, drop me a line, send me a message, and I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, uh, it, it, like engagement, you could talk about, I'm trying to, trying to skip, think of some examples that some of the guys have put out. So you could talk about uh, something that's happening in your particular niche or n- n- niche at the moment. 
what's happening in your market and the impact that's going to have when it comes to, to building your team. So that's now you're giving uh, some engagement, you're giving some value as well to help position you as, as, as an expert. You could also add to that and make an offer as well. Look, if you're having problems building, building your team, call me. But the hybrid was where you, you're adding a mixture of value and offer um, and, and engagement uh, in, in, in the same post. Does, does that make sense, Drew? Yeah, it does. It, it, it makes perfect sense. I think, you know, to round off, I think the mistake that the majority of recruitment service businesses make is that they, they put in content out because they know it's true. They have no real strategy or, or, or method or system behind it. Um, what we've seen work really, really well with our clients, with people who've helped over the years, is that you you have a system, you have a, you have a method, we're using a combination of all four, you know, four, four, four of these different frameworks at different times. Um, so we, we're doing post for engagement, we're doing posts just to give value and build equity in the market, we're doing posts just to extract the offer, and we're doing posts, you know, a combination of the two. And this could be on any platform, email, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever. But um, yeah, I guess the biggest takeaway that I want to go away with is that we want to have a, a bigger overall content strategy where we're doing all four of these types of posts, or you know, each post we have we do, which bit of content we create has uh, you know, one of these four different intents behind it. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you very much. So that's it. So just, just to recap, uh, you know the reasons why it's important to, uh, to post on, on the different platforms. Uh, it increases your awareness. Clients won't buy from you if they don't know who you are. Um, you, talk, you talked about growing your audience, showing, demonstrating your expertise, um, and it's a great way for getting business as well. So number one was about engagement, uh, which is you know, just for likes and comments. It's important because it gets your content seen. Number two is value only, where you're giving value to your potential market, be it clients or candidates, uh, but it's out to position you as an expert. Number three is the offer only, where there's a what we call a, a, uh, the only intention is a you know is is a uh, is for you to get some a business opportunity. So what we call a CTA or call to action uh, is an offer only, and the hybrid is is a is, is a is a mixture of those things together. So you can do engagement, value, and offer all all in one post. You know, and I know that uh, you should be putting posts out there, um, and but there's the right way of doing it because ultimately you're doing it to get business. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, just to remind you, we're here every week, every Wednesday at three p.m. Um, if you're watching the recording or if you're watching this live, please you know, give us any feedback. Much appreciated. Feel free to share this with your colleagues and friends as well. Drew, anything you want to add? Uh, no, just remember to like, subscribe, um, yeah, and join us back next week. Excellent. Until next time, folks, take care, take action, and be relentless. <laughs>